In 1994, a group of 33 people, 32 men and one woman, were stranded on a small island in the Pacific Ocean, far away from any major landmass. Because this was a period of chaos immediately following the end of the Second World War, they were virtually disregarded and left to survive on their own for the next several years. By the time they were rescued in 1951, only 20 of the 32 men were left. The other 12 had either been killed or gone missing, presumably due to fighting over the lone woman of the group. This is the story of the Queen of Anataham. Before we get into the story, if you would like to see more content covering incidents and events in a documentary format, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss my future uploads. In the Pacific Ocean, to the south of Japan, there are the Mariana Islands, a string of islands which is now administered by the United States of America. One of these islands is called Anatahang, which is where our story takes place. During the period between the First and Second World Wars, the Mariana Islands were under Japanese control, and a company called Nanyo Kohatsu, which roughly translates into South Sea Development Company, was conducting agricultural development in this area. The South Sea Development Company had a plantation on Anatahang, operated by the plantation manager, Kikuichiro, his subordinate, and the subordinate's wife, Kazuko, as well as a few dozen staff of local residents. As Japan began losing ground to the Allies, the war would eventually reach Anatahang. And one day in 1944, a group of 31 sailors drifted onto the island after their ship had been badly damaged in combat. The sailors were all young men, ranging from their late teens to early twenties. At the time, Kazuko's husband was off to another island to run an errand, and could not come back to Anatahang due to heavy military activity in the area. Fearing what the young men might do to her on this lawless island, Kikuichiro would pretend to be Kazuko's husband, assuming that the sailors would not do anything towards a presumably married couple. And so Kazuko, Kikuichiro, and the 32 sailors, along with a handful of local islanders, began their castaway survival life on this tiny speck of land in the Pacific. Luckily, this island had rich soil, so they would grow potatoes, catch fish, and occasionally eat rats and lizards that lived on the island. They would even make a kind of alcohol from the palm trees. For the time being, they had more than enough to survive. In the summer of 1945, Japan surrendered to the Allies, and the Americans would occasionally visit this island, announcing over loudspeakers that the war was over, and whoever was left on the island should surrender themselves. The local islanders were quick to board the American ships and leave the island, but Kikuichiro, Kazuko, and the sailors were reluctant to do so, partly because they believed the Americans would kill them if they gave themselves up, and partly because they didn't want to believe Japan had lost the war. They had enough resources to sustain life on this island, and decided to continue their survival life on Anatahang. Initially, Kazuko and Kikuichiro lived separately from the sailors, only interacting with them when necessary. But things would change in the summer of 1946, when one of the sailors stumbled upon the remains of a B-29 bomber, which had presumably crashed on the island during the war. He would find a pistol on the corpse of the pilot, and this would disturb the delicate balance of power. The sailor who found the pistol used it to threaten Kikuichiro, demanding to have Kazuko for himself. Kikuichiro had no choice but to give in, and the sailor would now become Kazuko's second husband. However, this second husband would soon be found dead. The reason of his death would differ depending on who you would ask. Kazuko would later claim he fell off a cliff, while some of the sailors claimed the second husband was killed by Kikuichiro. Not long after the death of the second husband, Kikuichiro himself would also be found dead, due to causes unknown. Kazuko initially claimed that he died because of food poisoning after he ate a raw crab, but would later change her claim to say that Kikuichiro was killed by the man who would later become her third husband. 
This third husband would also be murdered by a man who would then become her fourth husband. Around this time, there would also be rumors going around that Kazuko was sleeping with men other than her pseudo husbands, and that this was causing strife within the sailors. They would start blaming Kazuko as the root cause of the deaths and overall infighting among the group. Kazuko, fearing that the men might turn against her, decides that it would be safer to give herself up to the Americans. So she hid from the men in the jungle for about a month, waiting for a ship to come by the island again. In 1950, she succeeded in escaping the island on an American ship and was taken back to Japan. One year later, in the summer of 1951, the sailors remaining on the island were also rescued and brought back to Japan. However, it turned out that only 20 men were still alive. There were 32 men to begin with, and as far as we know, Kikuichiro and Kazuko's second and third husband had died. So there should be 29 remaining. What happened to the other nine? The simple answer is we just don't know for sure. Kazuko would change her story multiple times, and her claims were inconsistent with what the sailors had to say. As I will describe in detail later. After returning to Japan, Kazuko finds out her real husband was alive, but had married another woman, assuming Kazuko had died in the chaos during and after the war. Kazuko couldn't go back to her husband, so she needed a way to make a living on her own. She would attempt to do this through the media, as various media companies were more than happy to interview her. Kazuko would appear on various newspapers and magazines, and the story of a lone woman who survived on an island with a few dozen men spread like wildfire, making her somewhat of a celebrity. She would often talk about how she had relationships with many men, and how they would fight and even kill each other over her. It is up for debate on whether these claims were true, or if she intentionally exaggerated the story for publicity. The perception of the public was generally positive, seeing Kazuko as a strong woman who survived on an island surrounded by men, and would begin referring to her as the Queen of Anataham. A theater play would be created based on the story of the Queen of Anataham, and Kazuko actually starred in it, playing herself. She would spend two years touring Japan, taking to the stage in various theaters. She even had a full length movie made on her. Which she again played herself as the main character. There was also a Hollywood movie made after her story, but she did not participate in it. Unfortunately for Kazuko, the reviews for her shows and movie were horrible, mainly due to her poor acting skills. Around this time, some of the sailors would publish their own books, giving their side of the story regarding the Queen of Anataham. One of the sailors would claim Kazuko would seduce the men to give her food, clothing, and other resources, as well as manipulate the men into fighting each other. He claimed at least nine men died as a direct result of this infighting. Kazuko's poor performance on stage, combined with the accusations from the sailors, tainted her reputation. And her public image would turn from a brave survivor. Into a wicked woman who manipulated men to do her bidding. She would begin backpedaling on her claims of having relationships with many men, saying she had no choice, she had to get close to some men to survive, and that only two men had died fighting over her. The others had passed away from starvation, food poisoning, and other random accidents, such as falling off a cliff. But the damage had been done. And people would begin harassing her when they saw her in town. She no longer got offers for media appearances and could not get a job due to her tainted image. Kazuko would move to the countryside to avoid attention, and over time the media craze surrounding the Queen of Anataham faded away. Not much is known about what happened to Kazuko afterward, but she would eventually get married and run a small restaurant in the countryside. Kazuko passed away due to a brain tumor in 1971, at 51 years of age. Was the Queen of Anataham really a wicked woman who manipulated and indirectly killed multiple men to satisfy her personal greed and pleasure? 
Or was she just the victim of circumstance, doing what she had to do to protect herself, stranded on an island in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by men? There was a movie released in 2010, loosely based on the story of Kazuko. But few people remember the real story that inspired the movie. The story of the Queen of Anatahang has mostly faded away from the memory of Japanese people. It has been over 70 years since the survivors came back to Japan. The youngest of them would be in his 90s by now. If some are still alive, they are probably the only people who know what really happened on the island of Anatahang. Thank you for watching until the end. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video. I'll see you next time.